the channel. I am going to be showing you guys how we make our kraut today. So I got the basic recipe from Farmhouse on Boone. I'm just going to show you like how we do it and then I'm going to try something new today as well. I'll let you guys know how it turns out. So we buy kraut at the store and a lot of times it has different flavors with it. It's not just plain kraut. So I'm going to try to mimic that today. I'm always trying different things but I'm also going to make just our regular kraut. So what we do is we put our kraut with everything. It tastes so good. I grew up, I hated kraut. For, for some reason, this homemade kraut is really good and it just adds a lot of flavor to our dishes that we eat. And it's really simple. It just takes about a week to ferment and yeah, that's, that's all you have to do. So I've got my four heads of cabbage here. And the only reason I don't make this more often is it's really hard for me to find organic cabbage. So once I start growing it in the garden, I'll be able to make this more often. But, oh, and also kraut is a really great prebiotic for your gut. So anything fermented um, in smaller dosages are gonna have those microbial bacteria that's really good for your gut. So, and my kids are running around here, so you hear them. <laughs> All right, so first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take off this outer layer of the cabbage leaves. And we're going to say, put those to the side and we're going to hold on to those. We're going to use those. We're just not going to shred them. Um, usually, I guess you don't need to do this on every single one of them. It just depends on how many jars you're making. I'm going to be making four of these jars. Typically, I'll do two half gallon jars for a full gallon, but our <laughs> half gallon jars are have been broken and the only ones that we have left are currently being used for our raw milk. And we have to return those every time so that they can get refilled. All right. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to do is, I'm gonna move these to the side here, is I'm just going to cut the base of the, the base of the cabbage off. Knife here. If you have a food processor, this will make this go by so much faster. Uh, but if you don't, you can just chop it into really small shreds. So my food processor is very small. You guys can see that right there. So I already have to cut it up into like sections so that it'll fit down in there. If you like yours chunky, you don't have to pulse it very much. Maybe you could just chop it up. If you like it finely shredded, you could leave it in there a little bit longer um, and just make sure that it's just the texture that you like. Yeah, you can help. Alright, so like I said, mine is short, so I have to. the lighting the uh, it is bad weather today so my natural lighting is not the greatest and yeah so anyways all right so um, mine kind of looks like coleslaw whenever I am ready to do it I'll show you guys what that looks like there and I just go ahead and dump it into my big bowl and then I'm just going to continue to shred the rest of this until all of the cabbage is shredded. I put my cabbage in here. Yeah, we're making sauerkraut. Let's try to push those down in there. I'm helping you. You're doing great. You want me to help you? shredded now and it's in this large bowl here yeah all kinds of it um, and it smells kind of like coleslaw 
So I think the rule of thumb is a tablespoon per half gallon. It may be a gallon, but I'm going to, I think that's around a gallon of cabbage. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add two tablespoons of Celtic sea salt. So I love Celtic sea salt. So Celtic sea salt has like the best mineral supply ever. And it adds so much taste and flavor to your dish. So this is gonna be what we're using to ferment the cabbage. So I'm just gonna add in two. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna mix it with your hands in there and you're going to get all the juice out, which is called your brine. So the easiest thing to do, and this is a messy thing, it's simple to do, but very messy, is just push and just like mix that salt in there and your juice will come out of the cabbage, which is what you want. And then once you start getting a good juicy mixture, then we'll start putting it in our jars. Yeah. Can I help you put it in the jar? So once you are finished with that, if you're just making regular kraut, you're just going to fill in your jars. Like I said, this gets super messy. It works a lot better if you have the wide mouth jars. I guess you could hold it over top of the bowl. That would be easier, wouldn't it? All right, so you wanna press this down in there. Sayla's gonna come help me. So you wanna leave enough room in there to where you can put your cabbage leaf. Yeah. So you're gonna sho shove that in there. Can I smooth it? And then you want the brine to rise above it. If it's not above all of your kraut, then you're gonna get mold. If you don't have enough brine to rise above that, then you can add some distilled water. So mine does not have enough in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add enough distilled water to cover the kraut. You don't want anything sticking up in the air because it will mold. Okay, so here is the final look of it. You can see here, this is my water and brine. And the only thing we're gonna do now is put a lid on loosely. Okay, I, tie, I get it tight and then I just unscrew it one. Because you want it to be able to breathe. So as the gases, as it starts to ferment and there's gases created in there, um, if you have it on tight, you would want to make sure that you like loosen it enough to where those gases could come out. So I would do it at least twice a day. I'm just gonna like let mine be on there loose. If not, it's gonna pop and like bust out the top of the can so i've had that do it to me before i am going to just go ahead and fill the rest of these jars and i'm going to try something new i'm not going to really give you guys that recipe because i don't know how it's going to turn out but i hope that you found this recipe pretty easy and hope that you can try it let me know if you do if you like it um, it's super simple, but it does get really messy, so just beware of that. Look out in the future for a blog that I am starting with my husband, Holistic Homesteading with the Hearst. We're going to be talking about all things health. I'm going to be giving some yummy, healthy meals that are homemade, as well as health tips and fitness tips, and also our homestead journey. So you don't want to miss that, so be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and I will go ahead and put a link that you can put your email and your name in so that you can be updated when the blog goes live. So hope you guys have a great day. This one's mine. Okay. Hope you guys have a great day and we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.